Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Matthew Dale and we're gonna talk today about transferring presets from different fractal devices. So first things first, transferring up, meaning going from the FM3 to the FM9 or FM3 to the Axe Effects or in that order, transferring up pretty much always works. And there's a couple things to take note here when we do transfer a preset up. So here I am in FM3 Edit and this is a preset called Left Coast. And just take a note of these particular settings. So in the cab lock, the IR length is set to standard and the reverb length is set to economy, kind of a typical FM3 type thing. Now I've gone ahead and exported that and I'm gonna pull it into my Axe Effects. So let me navigate over to an empty preset and we are going to import this preset called Left Coast and you can see it looks like it's a lot smaller because of the grid size. I'll talk about that in a second. But more importantly, when we do step up from you know a smaller device like the FM3 to the Axe FX, now check this out. Our cabs have gone from standard IR length to max length. That's something that's kind of nice. But reverb stays on economy. So if you do want a little bit extra polish on your reverb tones, then go ahead and move economy onto ultra high to do that. It's not always something that's super noticeable, but if you do want, you know, the best of the best, go ahead and do that. Now transferring down is where things get a little bit more tricky. So if I navigate to another preset here, a preset called the sauce, the first thing that you want to take note of is if you're writing a preset that you want to transfer between the Axe FX or the FM9 and the FM3, you need to respect the grid size. Both the Axe FX and the FM9 have a grid size that is 14 by 6, but the FM3 has a smaller grid size of 12 by 14. So because I knew that I wanted to run this preset on both devices, I made it within a 12 by 14 grid. Another thing to take note, which this is probably self-explanatory, is CPU load. Obviously, if you have something that's running in the 60, 70, 80% range on the Axe FX3, it's most likely not going to run on the FM3. Another thing to be aware of is the block library. If I had, you know, another amp block like Amp2 or... Uh, several drive blocks where I was using drive block three or drive block four, if I go to transfer that preset, um, those blocks just won't pop up. Obviously they're not in the FM3. So now I've gone ahead and I've edited this preset. Now take special note again on the IR length set to max and the reverb length in this preset is set to ultra high quality. If I go over to an empty preset on my FM3 and I import, this preset, remember this one is the sauce. And you can see how that grid size changes when we import it from the Axe FX over to the FM3. Another thing to note is the IR length has changed to standard and the reverb uh, quality automatically goes to economy. And that again, sort of helps you save on CPU. But let's see if these sound similar enough. So here's this preset played on the Axe FX. <laughs> And here's this preset on the FM3. And that to my ears sounds pretty darn close. Certainly close enough where uh, if I don't want to take my big rack unit with the Axe FX, I can load it into the FM3 and be more than happy. But there are a couple of quirks when we do transfer down sometimes. One of the biggest things that I notice that I had to change before I recorded the audio sample is when I transfer a preset from the Axe FX over to the FM3, the delay time doubles and it halves if I go the opposite way. Uh, so example, the delay time over in Axe FX for the sauce was 500 milliseconds. It had shut up to 999 uh, when I pulled it in. So I had to pull it back down to 500. If I go the opposite way, if this is 500 in the FM3, it'll be 250 in the Axe FX. I'm not sure why that happens. That might be a bug. Uh, let me know if you've had similar experience. 
Another quirk that has to do more so with switching is per preset overrides. If I write a per preset override in the AxeFX3 to say control filter block one or something, uh, that may not line up with the same effect block in the FM3. Again, I'm not sure why, but sometimes it's hit and miss. Now, before I end this video, I wanna to talk to you about a really great expression pedal tip. Rather than, I'm gonna go up to this wah block and rather than assign, um, say, you know, pedal one on the FM3, the jack that's in the back of the unit itself, to control my wah pedal, I select external one on these. And the reason is you can set external one to be mapped to wherever you want. And in order to do this, you need to go to your setup menu, navigate down to MIDI remote, and then page over to the external tab, and then set external one to your desired location. On the FM3, I have external one set to be the pedal one jack that's in the back of the unit. But on my axe effects, I have external one set to be the pedal one jack of the FC controller. That way, when I transfer presets between devices, my expression pedals work without a hitch. So if you follow those guidelines and those tips, transferring presets between devices should be no problem. If you've noticed any other quirks or have any other tips for transferring presets between devices, let me know what they are in the comments below. If you'd like some other great fractal tips and tricks, then go ahead and download my fractal amps and cabs guide. I take you through some of my favorite amplifiers in the unit and match them with some of my favorite cabs for an excellent tone building experience. You can download that document for free by hitting the link in the description below. My name is Matthew Dale and I'll see you guys on the next one.